what I'm going to talk to you about is um, interdisciplinary practices in student research. And these are the kinds of skills and um, things I've learned while I have been involved with SATS full time. I've been with SATS since 2009, um, but uh, full time since I think 2017. Um, and so the, these are some some of the things I've learned in the last six years or so. Um, all right, let's get going then. I'm, I'm trying to get out these, I've got these, these toolbars and I'm trying to work out how to hide them. There we go, that's better. Okay, so let's, let's get started then. At, um, any, at, at any university or such, or such institution, you would find um, certain care categories or schools that you could study under. Um, so for example, here, here we have three, but uh, sometimes you might find more um, hum, hum, humanities, natural and applied sciences, and so social sciences, uh, uh, sciences. And then in, in each, each care category, you get what we call the disciplines. Um, so, for example, in humanities, you have art, history, languages, literature, music, philosophy, religion, or the theology, theatre, and so on and so forth. Um, and so we have those. Um, actually, I think the, these might actually be called schools, um, but there are d d disciplines as well. And then in each one of these, you have what we call sub categories and I want to talk to you about how how we can um, engage with some of these as we do the theology and then look at some some of the struggles that you might have as we do that at set I'm not saying that one can't um, in fact I'm saying that we should try um, but it's it's not not going to always be easy uh, uh, and I'll explain why, but I'll also show, show you cases where that has been done extremely successfully at SATS. Um, so let's move on to the next slide then. Okay, here, here are some examples. Um, there are more, but the, the, these are some examples. Okay, so we have theology and a second discipline. Okay, so think of the Theology as a d d d discipline, and then um, beneath that you would have uh, biblical studies, um, systematic the theology, practical the theology. Those are what what I would call sub d d d d disciplines. Okay, so here we have the theology and philosophy, which we would call philosophical theology. So the guys like J.P. Moreland and um, William Craig Lane, they, they deal quite a bit in this sub-discipline. Then um, the, the, theology and po po politics, um, this might be called political theology, and sometimes it's um, overlap with public theology. Then we have the origin arts or um, the economics, science, or, or social sciences, and so on and so forth. I'll show, show you how this is being been done at SAS shortly. Okay, now, um, there's this book. It's a great book. Now, don't let the title of this book put you off, right? Okay. Um, the, the book is called Lectures on Covenism, uh, but it's not actually about Covenism at all. Um, the, the guy who wrote the book is what you would call a neo covenist um, Abraham Kuyper, and um, he argues for exactly what we've seen here that um, theology should engage with with each of these aspects uh, because and he's he's got this quote which is not actually from this book but he he talks about this idea 
in the book. There is not a square inch in the whole domain of human existence over which Christ, who is sovereign of all, does not cry, mine. Um, and that is the essence of what that book's about. It's, it's a short book, a short read, but it's well worth a read. Um, it, it, it is a quite an old book, um, so it's set in a certain context. And um, not, not, not everyone would agree with some what he says in the book. I certainly don't. But I think it is sort of a huge help for, for us to start to think about how does Christian the theology uh, address some of these six particular issues like art and science and so on. All right, here are some examples. The, these are all from sets. Um, so the, these are um, a piece, pieces, MTH or PhD pieces that ha have been done by, by uh, a student at SETS. I have super supervised a few of them. I'll, I'll point, point those out, but um, uh, I wasn't involved in the, these except as an internal re reviewer for the six second one. And um, so here, here's a, a, a example, and it should not say here example, it should say examples because there are three of them here. So the, 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 the arriving pedagogical models for theological education from a biblical theology of, of acquisition, transmission, and effects of the knowledge of God. And Simon Gilham was the student for this one. Here we have theology and education, two the, 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 the disciplines. Um, and then focusing here, or at least in part, um, in the sub-discipline of biblical studies. I don't think I have a, how to get my pointer? It'd be nice if I have a pointer here, actually. Um, anyway, it's not, not too important. Then the, here, here's the sixth ticket one, um, art, art and per, per, art and polarity towards a theology of art with special reference to Ezekiel's pro, pro, prophetic sign X. This is or was a study in Old Testament studies, hence, hence Ezekiel's pro, prophetic sign X, but it engaged quite a bit in art. And Magnus Grossman was the, um, the student here, and he was an artist as well. Okay. Then we have this, this, this is a student I super, super, supervised, a theological, biblical anthropology of sin in light of a Kierkegaardian philosophy of human subjectivity. Um, so a, a the, theology of sin or a, 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 a anthropology of sin with a strong focus on philosophy. So philosophical theology in, in this case. Um, right, okay. Then a um oh these the, these were some of my own pa papers, not not a pieces, but pa papers I wrote. Keep in mind what, what I'm saying now applies to MTH and PhD pieces as well as as any articles or blogs. You, you wish to write or, or, or books as well and um, so this, this was in fact my the first paper i wrote um, and i wrote this for conspectors i think in 2015 um, i was in kenya at no i, I had just arrived back um from from kenya to to, to south, south africa and wrote this paper um Oh, hang on, I, I, I missed this one here. The, the, that's true for the sixth second one. Blessed are the consumerists, the ideology of contemporary mega church architecture. Then um, I, I've just wrote now a paper, um, Church Architecture in African Vernacular, which was the, the paper I, I spoke to you about a few, few weeks ago. Um, and then uh, in two, 2008, in 2000, 
and 19 i wrote a myth myth i wrote a myth methodology for systematic theology called architectonic theology um, and you'll see some of that um, a, bit, a bit later on and um, so here you can see how I, i'm trained as a architect but i have brought in uh, i've brought that into um, theology so, so there are some examples how that can be done and has in fact been done at sets uh, there are, are more examples um but i thought i, I would just choose a few for you to to add here okay so what what are the challenges that we might have in interdisciplinary studies at sets um and there are five well at least i i could think of five um uh, do do you as a student or a author have expertise in both the ology and your chosen second discipline um, so for me i can't write about something i don't know anything about um, i don't know much about per, per, per political science so it would be unwise for me to 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 try and link those two um uh, just disciplines to get together and then is there a supervisor at sets familiar with the other the discipline i i had a student a few years ago um about two years back and he said that he he wanted to write his thesis on the theology and uh, church uh, uh, architecture which was great because that works for me that that works well uh, i'm trained i'm trained as an architect we both speak the same language when it comes to our architecture so that worked but if if i did not work at sets there it, it wouldn't be some somebody to assist that that the student it's not to say that it can't be done um it could be done and it has been done but it's 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 not so easy for your su to supervisor who may be unfamiliar with that di 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 discipline um and then there is the question of co -su supervision so sometimes um a, a pieces may have like two two parts um again like um a p Theology and architecture, or perhaps art or science, um, you do 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 might need in that case um, two supervisors: the one that takes care of the one part of the pieces, uh, and the other takes care of of the, the other part. I had that w w with my own PhD. I had two two supervisors, and the one was more of an expert in the in the one field and and the, the and the other any other uh, i do want to say though that um it's not a bad thing to have your your pieces um co supers to supervise um i i i, I am quite frankly prefer to co supervise with some some yeah so we, we work as a team and then we 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 bounce our ideas off each other i mean it's especially powerful um for for a phd student um so one one should should not look down upon that um it it, it is a, a good a good option um in my port portfolio of students at this point in time i've got about half of other students i could to supervise with some something else and then half that I should supervise on my own. But again, it, it depends also on my expertise, the expertise that is re, re, re required for the su supervision of, of that thesis. Um, also, uh, uh, on that point, so sometimes, and uh, uh, I found that I did the, that this past week, um, if there is something you're not sure about um, as a su supervisor, we um, can consult some somebody else who is perhaps a better expert on that cert, certain t t 
topic um ad hoc and, and that works well too so we we had set um work well as a team of of super, two supervisors to to try and give the um students the the best that we have um that that was a bit of um off script but i think it was good to to, to talk about um then the the next tra 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 the next challenge that we might have is to find a external examiner um when 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 we had that student who was doing something on Ezekiel and art it it wasn't so easy to find somebody who could engage with art if eventually we have found some somebody that 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 could um exist i mean the phd um so we, we do have to keep that 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 in mind as well i've got a list of each examiner and what their and what their expertise are and we do have a few that say um well i'm a, a expert in uh, the the ology and psychology or the the theology and science um those those are great to have so that when there's a need we um appro pro pro approach them um but again it's it's something that we do do need to keep in mind um okay so it it, it is at times difficult at sets to to do a interdisciplinary thesis um, but it's not impossible um it's, it's been done and um can so certainly be, be done uh, as as i've shown shown you if if we were a large uh, or a large um school or a, a large um per, per public school stay like Zinnenbosch, then um i could approach um some somebody from the faculty of science sciences and say could you co-supervise this um i'll take care of the theological aspect and you take care of the, the scientific aspect or the 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 um art aspect or, or whatever that is and then the two of us could work work as a team and um, so it's it's not so easy doing that that's that's um, being that we just focus on the theology and rightly so um but, but again, this has been done at SATS and it's been done successfully, success, success, successfully. Um, so there is no reason why it can't be done. Uh, but we do, do need to keep that in mind. All right. Um, I, I thought it would be a good idea to um, look at some of these charts. I'm sure most of you have seen this. Um, I wrote this up when I, I joined SATS full time um, in the first month or two, um, and I, I thought uh, let's let's just have a overview of the four um, sub disciplines at, at SATS. Excuse me. Uh, so the first one is biblical studies. This is a this is a literary or contextual study and there are a number of fields these are some of them there there are more there's um biblical theology biblical exegesis hermeneutics biblical languages biblical or by by bible translation intertextuality and and up and archaeology i'm sure there are more but um those those are just a few and then what myth ideologies could we employ again here are a few of them the, the, the biblical, um, biblical translation narrative criticism rhetorical criticism social identity theory biblical theology exegesis and intertext text intertext Energy. Um, and of course you could find some overlap between these as well and um, we, we we are doing some work at this point to, to make these in the, in the near future available to um, students 
All right, and then we have systematic theology, um, which is uh, about um, systems and its concept is sexual as well. Um, there's a lot that one could explore here. Um, I've got a, a few. Uh, um, the, the list was um, so long that I, I just chose a few because if I increase the list, then that um, chart would go over the set sign and might look a bit strange. So I, I took a few on them out but I do have a few a few extras on on the next page okay so in this in this field we have the oh I, I should say look how it, it it breaks down so you have the the discipline being theology then the sub the, 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 the discipline in this case being systematic theology and then the field so these fields um we have um the theology prop Proper, which means the, the study of God, um, Christology, pneumatology, anthropology, soteriology, ecclesiology, and eschatology. And then the myth, methodology is used for that. Um, there, there are more, but these are the ones that we seem to use at SATS um, quite so successfully. This Osborne, Lewis, and Demarest. Um, here's mine, architectonic theology, historical retrieval and appropriation. This one's new, um, which we will introduce to SATS um, in, in the next few months. Um, and then di dialectical inquiry and similar to that, we have the Hegelian dialectic. Um, these have They've all been used success, successfully at sets. Um, then you, you'll find here we get some of this um, interdisciplinary going on in, in these fields. So we have historical theology, philosophical theology, apologetics, excuse me, African theology. Christian worldview, science and theology, and of course, art and theology. Mm -hmm. And the same myth ontologies can be employed here as well. Okay, then we have practical theology. Um, this is, um, well, obviously, it is practical and praxis. That's what it's about. Um, here are some fields, there are more. Um, pastoral theology, liturgy, homiletics, Christian education. They you can see the um, the interdiscipline going on there with education. Then we have counseling, ecclesiology as well fits here and and physiology um, what what is strange about about physiology is that um, it's it fits pretty much anyway it depends how you want to engage with it um, so if you, you want to engage with the mission of God from a scriptural point of view then it would fit into biblical studies or you could look look at it from a systematic point of view or in church and society as well so there are a few ways of, of doing that. Um, but uh, I find it such, generally speaking, it sits here or in studies in church and society. And then the myth and technologies employed for that include Ozma, Browning, Swinton, and well, what the Praxis Matrix, Surface, and Appreciative Inquiry. Uh, for some of these, it might, might be your first time seeing these. Again, these will be introduced to test, test students in the next few months. Okay, and then um, finally, but not least, um, studies in church and society. Here, the, the focus is on social, contextual, and descriptive. It is similar to practical theory analogy but it's not it's not the it's not the same um but you see that they can use the same methodologies um but the fields may include 
ministry context, community studies, congregational studies, missiology, there you see it again, biblical trans translation. Um, here you have a overlap with biblical studies, of course, and church history and public theology. Okay, so let's let's look at um, how we can start doing this. Um, so you now have a overview of, of what on offer at sets. Um, let's see how it can be done, um, and then we'll dig a bit deep, deeper after this as well. So it's a big picture first, and then working down to to the, to the final de the details. Um, let's look at um, the, the the main sub discipline being biblical studies. Um, with a, a strong element of practical theology or um, studies in church and society. I, I include both there because there, there is quite a bit of overlap. There are, there are some similar, but like I said, they are not the same. Okay, so the, the first thing you could do is identify the practical or the social problem. Um, I don't suggest that one does field research in, in this case, it should it should be, in, in my view, a literary, a literary um, review of what what research has, um, or, or what 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 is it? What what is the practical pro pro pro, pro, pro problem in a specific context? Um, without going to do the field the field. Research with focus focus groups and queer, 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 queer and queer questionnaires. I'm saying that because the chances are that your your su supervisor may be an expert in the old or the new te testament and might may not have the expertise to su supervise a student to do that kind of research unless you find a co -sup supervisor. And we do have one or two students to doing that, um, but one should, should be care, care, careful. Um, um, so, um, yeah, okay, then, then the biblical study is done. In a way to respond to the practical or the social pro problem. Um, and then um, it, 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 it uh, resolves itself in that 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 in that that in that last step um so resolve the practical social pro problem or what are the implications of the biblical study for the practical slash social pro problem and here's an example of how that was done this was um one of, of, of my first students, P, Peter Kuna Tefo, an exegetical study of Amos 5 verses uh, 10 to 15 with particular reference to promoting social justice in the Tutu. There was no field research done here, but you can see how um, Amos is the main text. Uh, but what he did in the first the first chapter, he explained what the problem was what 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 the social problem was, and um, then he did the exegetical study on on Amos, and then he looked at how they may apply or or, or uh, uh, promote so, so social justice in the city. Um, so, the, so 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 there was a strong um, emphasis here of studies in church and society. Next one, um, b b b b b biblical studies with systematic theology. Um, you could identify the theological pro problem and then do the um, b b b biblical study to respond to that pro problem and then resolve it at the end. Or what, what are the implications of your biblical study for the, the theological pro problem. And um, I think we've got an example here too. Um, yes, this was one that, that we saw earlier on. Art and 
popularity towards a theology of art with special reference to Ezekiel's prophetic sign acts. Um, that, that's actually quite a good example there too. All right, and then we have my my field of of ex expertise, or should I say, enjoyment, um, systematic theology. Um, okay, so what what do we do if we have a focus in practical theology, um, or or, or um, studies in church and society? Um, I designed um, what I call architectonic the that is structured in these four steps to um, to to work with um, more more of a, a focus um, in ch church and society. Um, so the first the first step would explore the context in the current in in uh, environment. Um, what what is going on here? Um, again, one one could do field research, um, but one should be cautious of doing that if you don't have the expertise, or if your super does not have the expertise. Um, so, so there there are so certainly ways of ways around that um, while doing systematic theology. Then, then step two would be um, a purely theme logical exercise exp exploration of context in historical theology step three here we will bring in the these scriptures construction of the foundation in exegesis and biblical motifs step four construction of order in space in dialectic synthesis and then step five um here again we see the idea of church and society uh, I think it's not that you must do this in step five, um, but it works well if, if you do. I've got a student who's um, um, she, she's just I think, yeah she, she's just received her um, her uh, internal exam um, for her MTH and she's done this um, extremely well, and um, she, she she's got that per per public theology in there um, so that there would be step five construction of form and aesthetics in public theology and um, so that, that's how that could be done there all right and here are some some examples um uh yeah this yeah okay good so so this was was one of my early students too, the Shinto purification rites and the concept of sin, concept of sin being in systematic theology, and then in Mark 7 verses 14 to 23, a strong um, biblical studies emphasis there towards a contemporary biblical theology of purification in and for the context of Japan. Um, Actually, there was a slight uh, practical um, focus at the end of the thesis as well. But here, here the the whole thesis was purely no, um, it it was in um, systematic theology. Um, but you, you can see by the, the gray highlights that that there was quite a bit of the theoretical studies as well. Here is the next one. Um, I've got a few ex examples here because this this is my field, and I, I know more about what what is going on here. Um, this was a, a student of mine who who passed a, a good few months ago, um, and he wrote a a thesis, a PhD, a critical, and then a critical analysis of Christology in anti right and Wolf Hart. Pennenberg implications for a Christocentric homiletic. Um, so the, the focus was um, to look at the works of Wright and Pennenberg, what, what was their understanding of Christ, um, hence um, sys systematic theology. But then there, there was a, a, a emphasis right at the start of the PhD and then right at the end 
on um, pre, pre 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 preaching how how do we um, preach a Christ centered sermon in light of the Christology as presented by N.T. Wright and Wolfhard Pannenberg. Um, quite, quite, quite a fascinating um, study if, if you are into that sort of thing. Um, and then we have studies in church and society. Again, a a a, a MTS student of mine, a Caliparian theology of living under Christ as king towards cultivating a Christian transformative cultural engagement in Croatia. Again, systematic theology, um, but with some focus in studies in church and society. All right, then we have practical theology um, and all studies in church and society. Um, and here, um, I think I've used here Swin Swinton and Mowat as the as the the, the, the the form for this um, example. So we we have step one, uh, the the sit sit situation, because this is practical the theology or studies in church and society. The expectation would be that you do in empirical studies that you do your field research um, that would be focus groups, questionnaires, and that sort of thing. So describe the, these suggestions, what is going on here and now. Um, and then two, uh, the cultural context analysis, analyze the, the findings from step one. And then step three, um, now here you you could um, join them. You could have one step or um, one chapter where you would provide a biblical and theological re reflection, or you could break it up into two steps. And you have the the one step would be biblical reflection, and then the next step would could be a theological re reflection. It would depend on the, your your thought topic what or how how you would go about doing this and then then step four form, formulating a revised practice so there in step three um which could be broken up to two you've got those two parts the biblical and the logical and here are some examples um the life and teaching of ezekiel a prophetic model for pastoral be theology in the Thai context. Um, so this is um, the, the, the sixth second part alludes to practical theology. Um, but then the first part, the life and teaching of Ezekiel shows us that um, there's a b b b b biblical element to, to, to the study. And how would this look like in store? We would have a, a, a focus in systematic p, 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 theology. A p, theology of Sabbath keeping based on the cosmic temple understanding of creation, especially for lay shepherds in Cornerstone Church in Simi Valley, California. Um, the, the, the first part is the systematic part, a theology of Sabbath key, key, keeping. Um, and then we have, um, especially for lay shepherds, as, as a part of pastoral theology, um, practical, practical, in other words. Um, okay, so how do we do theological inter sub the, the, the disciplinary studies in a thesis or a journal article? That's a big question that we, that we want to answer. Okay, so the, these are our tips. Um, let me just take a photo. Okay, so when you are going to um, engage with Biblical studies in 
another the theological sub discipline um these are some of the things that you want to do um look at or pro provide a preliminary analysis um that would be the trans tra the, the translation of the text and the and, and, and variations um the ideal is that if you translate the text yourself uh, from Hebrew or Greek, um, but if you, if you if you can't then find the best tra tra translation that you have, like the NASB or the ESV or the NIV, and then look look excuse me look at the variations um, of of the text and try and bring those out t t's t's teasers out of the text. Um, I, I will talk to you about um, language shortly. Then uh, contextual analysis. Look at the his, the the. the let me try again. Look at the historical and literary context of that passage. Um, the verbal analysis. The lexical analysis what do certain words mean and and grammatical analysis how how is the sentence or the phrase structured um it is best if you do this in, in hebrew in greek but if you don't have those skills um if you're doing practical theology um there that's okay there, there there are tools um again i'll talk talk to, it, 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 into that soon um then look or, or do a literary anal analysis the the genre the structure the composition and the rhetoric of that passage of scripture and then and uh, what are your exegetical findings what what is the original meaning of the text what what is the significance of the text for the topic that you are researching um, and then I want to build, uh, build up a bit upon it as well. Um, when you do a study in practical theology, studies in children's society, or systematic theology, especially if you're doing a MTH, it is best if you choose one passage of scripture um, and engage with that. If you're doing a PhD, then there is space to do more. Um, but it works well for a, a MTH if you just choose one text. Um, and try try and choose choose the, 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 the best one that works for the, the topic that you want to study. Um, I show, showed you that in that example where the student was doing work on sin or the concept of sin, he, he chose Mark. A, a, a pet, pet passage from Mark um, that that seems to work well. Um, don't, don't choose just one verse or two 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 verses. Uh, two, two verses. Some sometimes when I have applicants who apply to do their masters or their PhD at sets, they they just list one verse and that's what the the one study. It's too short, and there are ex exceptional circumstances where it does work. Uh, but for, for the most part, choose a, a chunk, not, not a big piece of scripture, but a, a fair-sized uh, piece of scripture to, to, to explore. Um, then there is the question of biblical languages. Um, if you're going to do your master's or your PhD in biblical studies, the expectation is that you have a good understanding of he, 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 Hebrew and or Greek, um, we we won't accept accept a, a applicant if they don't have those. Um, for systematic theology, you could get away without them if you're doing it do, doing a a MTH, but it is a a expectation that you've got a good good a good good understanding. Um, of them, if you are doing your p your p your p your PhD again, it depends on the topic that you are 
research searching. Um, it's not too important if you're doing it in uh, in practical theology and and studies in children's society, um, but we we do suggest that. Um, well, it it would be it would be in your favor that you do have a good good working understanding of them anyway, um, but it, it's not it's it, it's 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 not comp per, 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 it's not compulsory in that case. Um, I will say to you that the one example that you saw um, where I had a student doing his his thesis on cryptology on anti right and of how per per Pannenberg, um, he he was asked to learn German in order to engage with the work by Pannenberg and write his PhD, um, which is what he he did. So there are terms of those expectations. If you're going to engage, um, in the work of somebody who's doing like a French or German or some something else, um, for your PhD. Then expect it's expected that you learn learn that 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 language as well, but there are plenty of tools and resources out there to assist you. Um, then focus on the topic and avoid irrelevant info, info information. Um, and a great example here is that when you are doing uh, say a, a thesis in practical theology. Um, uh, but you want to bring a strong element of the the, the, the typical studies um don't then write five pages on the debates about the date of say when paul paul wrote ephesians um don't focus on the date um, because it's not important to to the topic that you want to 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 to, to research if your main thesis or, or your whole thesis is about a certain passage of scripture, then of course, um, you do do need to discuss the the debates about the date and that sort sort of thing. So try and focus your um, studies and um, focus on the main thing. Um, make make use of the best lexicons. Lexicons is a dic dictionary for Hebrew or Greek, um, and as well make use of the best. Um, of course, if you if you have a good understanding of those languages, um, or, or, or in fact, even if you don't have a great a great understanding, but you can work with Hebrew and Greek, these are great resources for you. Um, as you write that section on the the biblical text. I'm um, treat it like you are um, the, the, as you host a the, the discussion with scholars, scholars and um, give them to engage with each other. And then you, you record that, and then you bring in your 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 own voice as well. Um, and if you you're not sure how, um, while well, going and look at some of the more scholars. Bi Bible commentaries um, and see how they do to do, do, do that and try and learn from them and try and not not do that exact same style uh, because it, it's it's a thesis after all but but learn from how they go about doing it um all right I think this is the last no there are two slides left I think um one or two left. Okay, so systematic so, 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 theology in another theological discipline. Um, the the limit the the um, error or or the church or theological tra, tra, the tradition which you want to to to, to work in that, that that would be the, the theological theme or doctrine. And um, you can do that by tracing the contextualization of the topic. Um, seems similar to what I said be, be before, and um, the dialogue with the, the various competing um, debates and models. And um, 
and then provide your theme, logical interpretation and contribution as well. And then at the end, um, provide your theme, a logical form, formulation of that theme or, or, or doctrine. But I, I think there may be some clear, clear questions about this uh, shortly as well. All right, then, practical theology and or studies in church and society. Um, this, uh, hang on, this, this is, um, if you are wanting to do something in uh, biblical studies or in um, in a systematic theology that has a a practical component um don't create a don't create a strategy that better is if you are doing your whole thesis in practical the theology or studies in church and society um just reveal what the implications are so so describe the practical implications of your findings. Explain how the central idea may be applied practically. So explain how it may be um, applied, but don't create a strategy. It's not a, a strategic task. And show how it could change the, sit, 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 the situation. Um, and, then, and, and then show how it might be re, or, or how it might re, reorder cultural and per, per, per public spaces and all the in, per, per current environment. Um, so those are some tips how you might um, go about doing that for systematic theology or biblical studies. Okay, so let, let's hear some quick questions from you. I see that some of them um, are in the chat box. I'll hand over to the chair, and he'll lead lead me into these. Thank you, thank thank you all for your time. Thank you very much, Dr. Falconer. Very insightful and helpful. But this is an opportunity where our students can post their questions, and we already have a, a vote of thanks from Estelle. And uh, there's some typing in the meantime. I think I will post my question that I prepared for this afternoon. Um, my question is: How can practical theologians include systematic theology in their thesis or article, uh, especially that chapter or section that focuses on the normative task. So the challenge is uh, practical theologians generally are not known for their strong biblical studies or systematic prowess. Um, so this question is to see how we can improve that aspect uh, as practical theologians. Thank you. Yeah, I, I knew that this would, this would be one that you would ask me. And so I I made sure that it had a few notes. So I, I do have some script, script notes. Um, and I want to um, put this uh, book in the chat box too, which I think would be a, a huge uh, help. There are other similar turn books as well. I'm just going to start, excuse me, start by putting this in the chat box. So go, go and explore that, that book. Um, go, 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 go and look on it on... Um, Amazon and let's see as well if it's on take a lot. Okay, so the, the the first thing that you want to do is to to is to understand the, the difference between systematic theology and practical theology. Um, in simple terms, um, systematic theology looks at the. the, the doctrine or the teachings of the Christian faith um, and it, it builds upon the biblical studies uh, practical theology looks more at, at practice and how that doctrine could be applied um, so it's 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 the next step up um, how do we apply um, what the systematic theologians have taught us um, and where where you would start there is you identify a relevant theological topic or doctrine, 
um, and and then work work with that. Um, so let's just say you want to look at the idea of adoption in a in a in a certain context. Um, so so there's a certain cultural context. Um, uh, and uh, how might the church help some of the the, the people adopt tr 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 children? Well, then what you could do is um, well, it would be wise to start with scripture first. What, what does scripture have to say about the idea of adoption? And um, perhaps you may look at um, human human beings, um, Eli, who adopts in some sense um, Sam, Sam, Samuel, as in example or um, Joseph adopts Jesus um, and then look as well at how God adopts us um, and, and then um, build, build, build that up to a certain point where you could then apply um, a theology of uh, to, to, to adoption into a practical way and so look look at the contextualization as well and ensure that you have di the dialogue between systematic and practical theology. Um, I, I yeah, then look at, at the theme. Um, so so make sure that you focus on that one theme. Don't to, don't broad out too far. And you could look at that theme chron chronological or in a chronological way as well so um you, 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 okay uh, is the, it, it is it uh, is it enough or would you like some more no, no, that, <laughs> that, that's very helpful i think one of the things that i came across that would also help our students today is um uh, and i've seen it on sets epsco host um, on our in our library online library um it's called the ancient christian commentary uh, which is very interesting because it'll look at a, a verse and it'll say, how did Oregon or Irenaeus or, or Augustine or Calvin interpret this verse? So exactly. it gives you kind of a, 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 a chronological timeline of the development of the understanding mm. of the verse. I think as practical theologians, this is a tool that can help us yeah. when we're busy yeah. doing that. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Can, uh, can I just add, systematic theology creates the, the framework and practical theology ology provides us with the application of that framework excellent thank you thank you i see i missed this unfortunately but it was just above the the question or at least the, the announcement of the recordings dave asked the question under which subdiscipline does christian ethics fall mm. yeah um i think this one's a bit like uh miss it's a bit like missiology where it can it can fit anywhere um but generally speaking it's it fits under systematic theology so we have a good question here by um uh rudy who asks do you need to know hebrew and greek when your thesis is only about the old testament <laughs> um i would want to say yes because we have the sep, 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 which is in Greek. Um, so it would be ideal if you have a good understanding of Greek as well. Um, perhaps others who are more experienced in the Old Testament and I could trip in, but certainly that's, that's, that's the answer I would give. Okay. How do you suggest we be more intentional at attempting and what I'd most probably term intra and interdisciplinary. So intra between the different theological disciplines and then interdisciplinary, we're talking about these, um, you know, cross, cross, crossing over to, for example, yeah. psychology, yeah. sociology, yeah. your brain theology. How can we be more intentional about these? Well, this, this ties a bit with what Mona has just asked as well. Um, choose something that you know that that you are that you are familiar with. So, so don't don't don't, don't choose something for the sake take of it. Um, so for me, I should not choose the theology plus psychology because I've got no 
interest in it and so certainly no expertise so it, 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 if you have if you have expertise if you, if you have expertise start there and see how you may um, integrate that that, that, that other dis, to, 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 to discipline if it works great if not well then find find some, something else um, and what what you could do the first thing that you could do is, is speak to myself or Sean or others at, at sets and see how, how we may assist, assist, assist you so um, you you could start by saying I've got this idea I want to um, integrate these two things um, and this is my idea do you think this would work or not if not do you have some advice that's a good place to start and then we could build off from there yeah and th that's very true and um, usually is it possible to have more than two disciplines in a thesis now if we're speaking about intradiscipline, i would say think so um mm. in this case do we need to reformulate the subject to keep only two disciplines or do we need to continue with all the disciplines involved um, well, yeah. I mean, the the uh, the, uh, the uh, argument in this presentation is that we we can have more than one, and we should try and have more than one. But I wouldn't go more than two. Um, <laughs> three three gets a three gets a bit much. Um, yeah, three is a crowd. Yeah, three three three, <laughs> three is a crowd in the sense. Yes. Um, yeah so do do we need to reformulate the subject to keep only to yes you, you do, do, have to think about how, how you would reformulate that um it's it's not hard it takes a bit of practice but it's quite quite it's quite workable um or do we need to continue with all the disciplines involved I, I don't quite understand that last bit how how do we continue with all all the disciplines involved so when i say to, 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 to disciplines I'm talking about like the ology and art or, or, or the, the, the ology and science when we are talking about sub disciplines we are talking about, about for example the, the biblical studies and practical theology mm -hmm. yeah and that's very important to remember this whole if you want to call it taxonomy of um, a, a, a discipline a sub discipline and what I would normally say, field and a topic. So breaking it down at those layers. Mm. And I think in this case, uh, for Daniel, you would anyway stick with the main discipline, but you would be interacting with other disciplines or they would exactly. be dialogue with one another. Mm. So we have a question from Enoch asking, how do we deal with a situation if the supervisor does mm. not have the expertise or the knowledge in the area the student is writing about? Yeah, um, I do my best. Um, to select the best supervisor or supervisors for each student. Now, what we have tried to do, and we still try to, to do, is to give the student a say. So, even when they apply to do their masters or PhD at SAT, I um, ask them, um, who would you like to be your super supervisor? So the, the, they have a list of all the supervisors with their their, their pictures, um, and then their and, and then their expertise. Um, but just because they choose a su to, 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 to a supervisor does not mean that it is the best one for their research pro 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 project. But we we try and accommodate the, the students as best as we can on that. Um, but at the uh, at the end of the day, it's up to me to 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 try and pair the um, student with with the best super, supervisor. Uh, I also should say, and I, I don't know if I should say this or not, but sometimes you get to know a certain student and the kind of work, and then you know the 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 profiles that you don't see on the profile page. That is sent out so you know the kind of supervisor this person is and you know okay this student would work really well under that that super, super supervisor or you do might know okay this this supervisor has that kind of 
t t t this kind of t temperament, um, the student will not work well under him or her, uh, but instead would work under this this person. Um, so I'm aware of those kind of things as well. And um, I forgot what the clear question was, <laughs> but um, to, to, to read it again, Sean, but, uh, but uh, how, how do we deal with a yes. situation if the supervisor does not have the expertise? Yeah, so um, I, I try to find a supervisor or supervisors who do have that kind yes. of, of expertise and you're told up front when you apply um, what expertise each supervisor has. Sometimes, and we try and avoid doing this, but there are, there are cases where we are better to look outside of SATs and to find a external super, super supervisor to co-supervise with a SAT super supervisor so that we do have the, the, the expertise. And, but, but we avoid doing that because the external supervisor does not know what the SATs um, standards are and what the yeah. post tests are. And there, there are fee, fee, fee implications for SATs as well. Um, it won't affect the, the students' fees, uh, but, but there is still a, a, a financial um, implication. So, so there are those sort of things that we do need to think about. Um, again, it is workable, um, but there, there are important things to, to think, think about. I really like what you said there. So the, the, the thing is, um, how do we pair what the student needs and what SATS has as a resource? Mm. And that includes beyond just academic uh, cognitive intelligence or knowledge. It has to do with temperaments. It has to do with timelines. It has to do with expertise, etc. So, and I know you really take a lot of time and effort in making sure that the right uh, student and the right supervisor are paired. And as you said, if the disciplines differ, uh, co-supervision. I, I remember one of the students that you've, you've uh, allotted to me um, is in the area of orthodox theology mm -hmm. and that's not necessarily my expertise but my expertise is in good research methodology and so you've paired me and a co-supervisor who's strong on that theology and together we are able to help mm -hmm. the students so definitely yeah. i've seen that in practice thank you for that yeah um i just want to go down i see um okay there's a thanks i'm i'm not going to delve into the analogy of the tree just at this stage we still have some more questions um the supervisor, Francis has written, the supervisor does not need to be an expert in the area you're working on. Exactly. Um, in fact, by the time you finish your thesis, you will be the expert, not the supervisor. <laughs> and yes. that, that's, <laughs> love, that's what I love about research and supervising. Mm. The supervisor can have a general knowledge in the subject, uh, but he doesn't have to be an expert. So, so the main thing, if I may say this, that, that supervisors are, are bringing to the table is they are helping you in two areas the, the, and we talk about graduate attributes and skill attributes but the one when i think of skill attributes um, i'm thinking of as a supervisor we want to make sure our students know the subdiscipline, the field and the topic in broad strokes because mm -hmm. they're going to become a master a doctor on those those areas and then can they do independent research can they mm -hmm. We are not to do the research. Can they do it? But we coach, we cheer, we mentor. And then at the end of the day, obviously on the doctorate, are they contributing new knowledge? Whereas at a master's mm. level, you're contributing knowledge. But one of the things that we're very aware of is that um, an overemphasis on academic, just cognitive development uh, in, in these areas. And uh, Dr. Falcon has been working on some interventions where we're going to be having opportunities where students can start sharing their work so that you can learn the skill of publicly talking in an academic setting. Um, you want to maybe elaborate on that? Because I think that's part of this. Um, yeah, topic. I mean, I, 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 I wanted to pick up a bit on what Francis Mondi has said, but but just going on to what you have said, I, I hope next week or, or the or, or the week after I'll, I'll send something out to all the, the masters and phd students and and there, there will be a plan to meet every three three three, three months where i'll select, select um three or four or five mth and phd 
these students to uh, present their, 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 their work and I'll get one of you to 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 to, to, to chair the uh, meeting as well so 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 that our students have a, a chance to to practice yeah. and to and to learn um you know to, so to pick up on Fran what Francis Armandi has said he's right you don't need to be a expert in the field uh, but keep in mind that the uh, the the field field breaks down from the sub discipline um um so uh, um so, so my phd super, supervisor was a expert in in african theology and so my phd was on the atonement in the the african context so he in that sense was an ideal super supervisor even though he wasn't an expert on the atonement um, but he knew an, enough to to super, supervise me um, so so there is sort of sense that they do need to be a a expert in and around that that theme uh, but not specifically that that theme um, and, and that they don't make a, a great super supervisor when they do have that kind of, kind of expertise it's 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 not too specific but it is specific enough to to assist their students in their the masters or phd mm, that's that's helpful um so before i uh, read samson's uh, which will be our last question um i'm just thinking fondly back to the um i prefer to be called a specialist than an expert because someone once told me that uh, when you think of expert x is an unknown variable and spurt is a drip okay. under pressure and i do not want <laughs> unknown drip under pressure so, uh, <laughs> so i prefer the phrase specialist but we've got a question from samson what is the role of literature review in our research ah uh, wow okay we can talk a lot about that <laughs> um yeah i mean when when i say experts i mean um yeah I, I suppose we all can't really call ourselves experts eh? um but but space 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 Specialists. It's it's that it's it's those topics that that you focus on and and um, enjoy. So as I said, my 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 work is done on uh, the atonement in Africa. Um, but would I call myself a a expert? I, 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 I suppose not. But I am a specialist in in that. That, that field um so that, that's a good point okay let, let's go to what sam samson has said what is the role of a literature review in 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 our research um sometimes it's called a review of scholarship they mean the, the same thing um every thesis must have a literature review in chapter one um, and it, it should be short. Um, I prefer a three to five pair. The be be the shorter the better. Um, so I think three three to five pages works well. Um, and this is to um, to locate your topic in what has already been re researched, and then. Towards the end, you do a show how there's a gap and how your research topic fits in that, that gap. Some fee some thesis also have a chapter where they only do a, a review of scholarship and they um they they lay out what research has already been done so, so that you can then build off from that. Um, but I think the 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 short the the, the short of it is um, what what's been done, and how does your work fit into what's already been said? Dr. Falconer, thank you very very much for a very insightful and enjoyable afternoon. It's always a pleasure listening to you and engaging with you as a specialist in your field and. I'm looking forward to our future articles and thesis, 
where the students and the various folk who've been in the room today, and even those who are going to be watching online, um, apply what you've you've shared. So, any last words? No, not not much. Um, but um, best of luck to, to the 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 MTH and PhD students as students who are grappling with us, and may God be with you.